What's going on, everybody? Oh, so we have a very interesting little bit of uh, things that have happened from Uber over the last 36 hours or so. Uh, so we're going to be talking about this op-ed that Dara, the CEO of Uber, had put out in the New York Times. Uh, going to go over a lot of different things there. So first off, what we're going to get out of the way is, yes, this is a live stream. So anybody who's watching right now, hey, what's going on? How are you? And for anybody who's watching the replay, we're going to go over a lot of the different things within the op-ed, what Uber has put out on their site, and we're also going to fill out the feedback form uh, live here. So I'm going to want some of your input for anybody who is in the live stream. So this is probably going to be a little bit longer of a live stream because the op-ed is a little bit longer, and then there's a couple other things with it. Uh, so if you do want to know exactly what's going on with that and share your opinions, Make sure you do it in the live chat or in the comments below. Now, getting on, um, yeah, it was pretty interesting opening up an email earlier today. So let's get right into it, essentially. All right, so this is an email that I got popped up from Uber, uh, and he's just basically talking about how difficult things have been and trying to get everything where people will actually fill out this feedback form, uh, which again, if you are a driver uh, for Uber or Uber Eats, you should have received this email that looks pretty much exactly like this, uh, except probably just with your name instead of mine there. Uh, and then down at the bottom, definitely fill out the feedback form and don't hold back. Whatever you want, it is, uh, again, I will show you right here. I'm gonna fill this out later. Um, so this can be optional. So email address of the account is optional. So you don't have to uh, be tied or you it doesn't have to be tied to you in any way. So if you fear any uh, bad recourse or anything like that, you don't have to worry about that. It looks like it's going to be pretty much uh, anonymous. So if you want to make sure you do this, fill out the information, don't hold back. And I guess apparently what they're going to do is they're actually going to publish the results of this form. And it's whether it's going to be something good or bad, they're not going to hold back. So this is talking about some of the transparency that he's talking about in the app, or I'm sorry, in the op-ed that we're going to go over in a minute. Um, what's up, Mark, Nancy P, how you doing? Um, so yeah, if you go to Uber's site um, real quick also, this is a little video that they put here. I can't play it because it's on a YouTube video on Uber's uh, page. But if you want to see where Dara and a few drivers, and again, it's a few drivers, sit down and talk. Uh, I think it's like 36 minutes or something like that. So it's not really long at all. Uh, but it has a little bit of information. And yes, Dara was sitting down with a few drivers, kicking back, relaxing, and having a good old time. Uh, but it also shows you a little bit of out of touch, how some of the things are. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, conference that they did have. Uh, so I do say, check it out if you have the time. Uh, again, I'm not gonna play that now though. Um, and then go again, going on to what Uber's putting onto their website. Again, also all the links that I go to will be in the description below. So you can check that out uh, and do all that stuff. Nifty 50, what's going? That interview was ineffective. It was, but it was also, there was some some light that you could see in terms of, um, I don't know how to explain it. I think it's just because I looked at it from a different angle um, than what it was. And also another thing, Harry on the Rideshare Guy just posted a sit down interview with Dara uh, that posted about 8.30, it's about half hour long. Uh, if you wanna check that out, go over to Harry's channel, Rideshare Guy. I'm sure mostly everybody knows that and probably may have already seen that. Uh, I wanted to wait until it was over until I went live with this, uh, but it was pretty interesting with that. So yeah, like I said, going back to this though, uh, it's talking about what they wanna do when it comes to the new way of being a driver. So they don't want to be employee status because that's a real problem them. And you can't really say they're independent contractors because it's really not, much true anymore because there's so much control that Uber and Lyft and these other companies actually have over its drivers, its delivery drivers, its shoppers, whatever it is. Now, I know Uber, or I'm sorry, I know Dara has been talking about trying to push for this for a while. 
Um, the question is, is it going to actually be good? Is it going to be beneficial for drivers? Or is this looking more for their own companies to be part of something and to try to sidestep governments from actually being full-fledged employees? Now, what your thoughts may be if you want to be an employee or if you want to be an independent contractor or if you want to try and see what a third classification could look like where it would kind of be a mixture between the both. That's your personal decision. If you want to voice that, you absolutely can. Uh, my personal decision of weighing all of the options is no, I don't want to be an employee. And if you were going to be an independent contractor, they need to do a lot of different things to be able to make that happen. Uh, so are they going to just look at possibly doing a third classification? I'd be okay with that if it offered certain benefits. But again, where are the drivers when they're coming up with this type of thing who are actually in the field doing the work and know exactly what they're looking for or could be better advocating for other drivers that may be part-time, uh, I would say like a little bit of time, meaning like they're drivers that are just going out for vacation uh, money or something like that. Uh, but it has to be able to affect every driver and be a better option. So where is the avocation when it comes from drivers who know what's going on? That's what I want to know too. You can't just pick cream of the crop like in this uh, uh, video that was played. Uh, you can't just pick those few and go off that because they kind of sucked up a little bit. I mean, you're on a conference call with the Uber CEO and then it's also posted onto Uber's uh, YouTube page. It's also posted right here. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be one of those uh, little feel good piece kind things. And if you were truly an independent contractor that wanted to voice your concerns, you kind of want to do it in a way where you can and you don't have to fear retribution or anything like that. Um, what's up going on, Dylan? Uh, Uberman Tampa, go Donnie, what's going on? Where's the chicken outfit? Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. I've been really busy with a lot of things, uh, just getting things back over the last couple of days. What's up, Beacon? How you doing? Dustin, <laughs> beat you to it. <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, but yeah, like I said, so the link for this is in the description. If you want, I would check out that video just to see. It does give some insight on a certain aspect. Try to look at it from a different uh, standpoint from where you are just to see. Uh, because it did have some benefits to it, but again, it was really a soft spoken thing. And then same thing, check out Harry's uh, interview that he had with Dara a little bit ago. And on top of that, Dara or anybody at Uber who's watching this, I would love to have you on here, but I would love to have you on a live stream where we can sit down on a real interview going back and forth, or maybe Dustin is driving. That would be a great one too. Uh, or even Rideshare Professor, some of the other channels uh, that have a good following. Would love to have you sit down, do a live stream, and actually have try to have a constructive. I don't want to beat you down. I don't want to do anything like that or call you out, maybe a little bit. Uh, or have people in the live chat actually ask real questions that you can have real-time uh, answers to and hopefully maybe put a little bit of ease or come up with different ideas because I like to be a problem solver. So that's part of what I'm gonna do later when we're going over the op-ed is try to problem solve a couple of things. So again, I wanna invite you on, but I wanna do it as a constructive thing. So challenge, challenge accepted? I guess time will tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love to do that. Uh, and so let's go into now let's go into um, the op-ed itself. This is posted in the New York Times. Link is in the description. So if you want to check this out, uh, so you can do that. Uh, and yeah, it's titled, I am the CEO of Uber. Gig workers deserve better. Good title. Just do something about it. <laughs> uh, gig workers want both flexibility and benefits. We support laws that could make it possible. Okay, good. At least you're on board. And yes, Dara has been saying he wanted to do this for a while. But the thing is, what is it going to look like? Is it going to look like Prop 22? Because if it looks like Prop 22, that I'm not going to be a fan on. So uh, I did read Prop 22. I read the whole thing. It's uh, uh, not really great for drivers. It's better than, I would say, being an employee. But that's my personal opinion. 
uh, because I think what they're going to do with employees is exactly what he's going to state in this opt-ed. And I think that it's not going to be beneficial for drivers if they're employees because, uh, you know, like I said, he, he puts it right here. I, I think he's actually going to be pretty honest about that. Um, I don't think that they're going to sugarcoat it when it comes to that way. I think they want to try. I mean, they're probably going to use a little bit of fear tactics. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't want people jumping all over right now. But yeah, I think he's probably going to say the truth on that, or at least to a point. Um, you know, they've been saying it since the beginning that if they had to go to employees, a lot of drivers won't have the freedom anymore uh, and the flexibility. And yeah, a lot of drivers do want that. I like the ability to go on and off when I choose, when I want. Um, if I want to go off for a week because I'm out of town, if I want to go off for four months because of COVID, you know, I have the option, the ability to do that. Uh, when it comes to being an employee, you don't necessarily have that option. And again, um, he has been saying something like this for a while. Uh, so if you can put your money where your mouth is, that would be even better. But again, I want to see some drivers actually who are really knowing the system inside and out. Uh, they've got a lot of rides under their belt. They're, you know, good drivers and even bad drivers. You know, there's a reason why there's some low rated drivers out there. Find out what it is, work together to help them either succeed, get better, um, and make it a win-win for both Uber and the drivers. It can definitely happen. Why not try it? Um, Rick Farmy, what's going on? Eric, um, yeah, let me just hit in the uh, chat a little bit. Only question people will ask is when are rates going up? That will never happen. Yeah, you know, that, that's a big thing, rates. You know, the whole reason why this thing started was because drivers were making good money a few years ago and historically prices were great. And then over time, they shrunk and shrunk and shrunk and are where they are now. In some places, they've just gone through another um, shrinkage. So, yeah, it's a real problem there. Um, I work, cannot hear you, but want to contribute. Oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, I think... There needs to be a two-piece authentication between driver and passengers like the code. Yeah, the PIN code, I think, would be a great thing. That's actually one of the options that I want to bring up to going through this op-ed. Um, Uber is a joke, genuine. <laughs> um, we're all going live. Nice, Donnie. Um, rat, rates need to go up. Gas prices are up. Yeah, I mean, rates need to go up. One of the biggest problems is the rate. If you're making $0.66, cents, $0.71, cents, even $0.80 cents a mile, and then you look at what the IRS deductible mileage rate is, which is supposed to account for um, gas, which is uh, maintenance, repairs, uh, any depreciation, anything like that. That's your car cost. That's your cost to operate your car. So if you take that, what is it now, 58 cents or 58 and a half cents or something like that. Um, if you take that off your 66 cents, that's less than 10 cents a mile you're making more in time than you are on the road if you're doing it that way. Now, that's a really crude way to look at it because most vehicles aren't going to actually fulfill that 58 and a half cents. But still, that's you know pretty on the ball when it comes to it. And that's what the IRS and the government has set up when it comes down to it. Um, okay, 58 cents, thanks. I couldn't remember if it was still half a mile or half a cent or not. Um, Pico, what'd you do? I'd done two uh, Uber and Lyft two years ago. Once COVID happened, and stopped. It's not never worth it. Uh, it's too bad it took long to realize. I'm right there with you too. I haven't driven since uh, late March. Uh, I think the last date it was March 24th. I think it was. So it was actually at, it was a little after they actually closed down the state. Um, but it, it was just getting a little out of hand, and there was some issues, and you know, hearing complaints from drivers about what was going on when it came to what was going on with this whole pandemic just isn't worth it. And now with the mask thing, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, so especially with how many problems there are. Uh, and I know a lot of rides are still going on without a hitch and a lot of drivers and riders are doing perfectly fine. I just don't want to wear it the whole eight hours or whatever I might be out on the road. And then I don't want to have to deal with passengers who may try to pull anything. It's just not worth it. And then the false accusations are a real problem lately too. Um, 62 cents only after you pick up a passenger, it could take over 10 minutes before even pe picking somebody up. So basically you're making half that after the mile. Yeah. 
Um, that is true too. Your your dead miles going to pick people up and and then go to the next. Uh, if you're driving around aimlessly, yeah, it's great for tax deduction purposes, but you know it's not going to be good for your bottom line in your pocket because you're going to still have to. Uh, spend the money to fix your car, to get gas in your car, to do all those different types of things. So um, driving around aimlessly, great for taxes, horrible for your bottom pocket line, essentially. Um, all right, stopped on three to five. Haven't oh, stopped on March 5th, okay. Haven't seen Surge in Vegas since then. Wow. Uh, Mark, I, you know, it's weird because every time I look at Uber, there's always Surge. I haven't looked at it in about two weeks, so I don't know what it is, but I've been hearing that. Yeah, Vegas is really weird. Um, I just think that with nobody really going there, um, that's op-ed is, um, this article right here. So this is, again, it's an opinion piece. Uh, it's an editorial. So this is what, uh, Dara had written. It just came out earlier today. Uh, so we're going to read through this, kind of give my opinion. I want to get, hear your thoughts on this as well. Uh, what you're thinking. So again, if you're watching this on the replay afterwards, uh, put in your comments what you think, uh, and also, you know, don't hold back when it comes down to it and what you think could be improved, because these are all things that if they get put down, somebody may see it. Chances are it's not going to happen. I will see it, and if I ever have the opportunity or chance to talk to Dara or somebody else, you know, these are things that I would want to bring up because it's the ability to problem solve, create something that's going to be better for both Uber to operate and its shareholders, its stakeholders, its board. It's a win-win there and it's a win-win for drivers because it's going to be better. So uh, do you understand that the cars are autonomous? All rides are going to be live. Well, that would be interesting. We could do uh, uh, what you call it, like live PD. We could do live ride share and then just go from one to one to one. Um, that would actually be pr pretty fun if I could get into that feed. <laughs> um, no ride requests in Southern Cali since 12 this morning and still no ride requests now. Jeez. Uh, Mr. T, are you doing a higher uh, rate? Or did you put your rate higher? Because uh, I know sometimes that can have an effect. Uh, and I'm not saying go under the 1X one, one fare in any way, shape, or form. Never do that. In fact, I would say don't even go below 2X when it comes down to it. Um, that's the only in California. Although I want to see those changes made countrywide because that's also going to give drivers the ability to make better decisions when on the road. And also setting your own fares is going to be good because then you can try to make a little bit more money. And yeah, you there could say something like, well, they're going to probably screw you out because they're going to put the lowest, uh, drive or the lowest fare driver out there first, no matter where they are. Um, so yeah, there, there are some, some nuances to it, but I, I, like I said, I personally wouldn't go below two X, but that's my opinion. All right. So let's go into, uh, this op ed, like I said, anything that you hear, uh, oh, you haven't changed anything. Okay. Um, yeah. And then write down what you think about that as well, too. That's really what I want to know. Um, but yeah, so again, Dara wrote this link is in the description below. So if you want to check this out, then you can. Uh, but it says, since the first Uber trip 10 years ago, one accidental question has shadowed us. Do we treat drivers well? The answer is not really. Uh, if you are a part, really part-time driver, you don't probably care too much. Uh, if you've been a part-time driver for or like a real, real part-time driver, I mean, you're going out a couple days a month maybe to just get some extra money, extra play money, bar money, whatever it might be. I don't know, let me know. <laughs> but if you're a driver who's doing this part-time to rely on some sort of income, if you're doing this full-time who's relying fully on this income, then you know this is where it's going to be true. But do they treat drivers well? No, I haven't seen that. Not lately. Um, and there's so many issues there. That's really loaded. I could answer that question. Actually, I would love to ask him this question right here. Do we treat drivers well? I'd like to hear his answer and then make many points on a lot of the different things that, that they've done with rate cuts, with false accusations, with the deactivations without being able to um, say something back or to try to um, put something where it's not going to be. Um, all right, hold on. <laughs> I got to get some water. Where you can't, okay, with the, the false accusations and getting falsely deactivated, 
how do you fight that? So something like that, that's, those are things that need to be answered. So, all right, many of our critics, including the New York Times editorial board, that's probably why you put it here, uh, believe that Uber and our gig economy peers have failed drivers by treating them as contractors and that we will do anything to avoid the cost of employee benefits like health insurance. Given our company's history, I can understand why they think that, but it's not true and it's not what I believe. All right, well, it's not, might not, I'll give you a benefit of the doubt. Let's say you, what you write here is accurate to your knowledge and not through legal. Um, if that's not what you believe, I can get that, but with the board and different things, your hands could be tied. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, but you know, yeah, they are trying to do everything to avoid employee benefits and employee status. Look at what's going on in California, $110 million ballot initiative, and they put $30 million to it. So a lot of money right there uh, when it comes down to it. And then it says, our current employment system is outdated and unfair. It forces every worker to choose between being an employee with more benefits, but less, less flexibility, or an independent contractor with more flexibility, but almost no safety net. Now, that's pretty much true for the most part. Um, yes, if you are an employee, you do have more benefits and less flexibility because most of the time it's going to be something where you are on a schedule for most things. But there's also employees who can work when they want, where they want, how they want, as long as they get the work done for that particular time frame. So if they have a week's worth of work, they can pretty much do it at any time they want. They just have to get it done. So there is still that flexibility when it comes down to it. Uh, so again, there's, there's a little bit of nuance there. And then being an independent contractor, yeah, you're going to have a lot of flexibility and it's pretty much no safety net. But when it comes to being an independent contractor, you are also in charge of everything. So that means you're able to say what the prices of things are. You're able to um, account for everything, meaning the costs associated. So if you're, let's say, a general contractor and you're going to do a bathroom renovation and you're bidding out that job, you're going to know what the parts are that you're going to put in. So the sink, the countertop, the counters, the, the shower tile, the door, everything. You're going to be able to price that out accordingly and what the labor cost is for all of that stuff. And you're going to be able to do it. You're in charge of that. You have full oversight. And then it's going to be up to the person if they're going to hire you or not. So this is the problem because as an independent contractor for Uber, they pretty much dictate everything that you have to do and only give you the flexibility pretty much to go on when and where you want when it comes to around your market. Um, so that's where there's these issues. So it says Uber is ready right now to pay more to give drivers new benefits and protections, but America needs change in the status quo to protect all workers, not just one type. So if Uber is ready right now to pay more to give drivers benefits and protections, put your money where your mouth is. And I know I watched Harry's uh, live stream, or I'm sorry, premiere video about this uh, just a little bit ago, and he kind of answered that question, but I don't believe it. I think that's all bull. Um, so that's in my personal opinion when, when that was. Um, if you are ready to do something, put it into practice. Come up with something. Be the leader that you say you want to be. Don't just talk out of your ass and then down the road uh, wait for something to happen because that's just going to make you seem like you're illegitimate and it's just not right. Um, I thought you were saying you are the C No, I'm not the jeweler. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind being the CEO. <laughs> Although I'm sure everybody would be hating on me then. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, haven't changed anything. All right, so uh, why not just treat drivers as employees? Some of our critics argue that doing so would make drivers' problems vanish overnight. It may seem like a reasonable assumption, but it's one that I think ignores the stark reality. Uber would only have full-time jobs for a small fraction of our current drivers and only be able to operate in many fewer cities than today. Now, again, they have said this before. They've said it across the board. They're going to probably go to a schedule, even though they probably somehow work in flexibility. Um, there could be some problem solving there. Uh, it's just going to take some out-of-the-box th thinking. So open up the floor to more people to come up with these ideas and see what could sorry, and see what could work. That's going to be really the way to do it. Um, 
But yeah, like I said, I think that they're pretty much honest when they say that they're going to go to a schedule. It looks like he just cleared it up by saying it's going to be full time. And it looks like they're going to have uh, seize operations in smaller cities if that's the case. Uh, again, it's probably fueled with fear tactics, but I think that part of this is going to be in there. They're probably going to have part-time drivers too, let's let's be real. Uh, but, you know, I'm going off of what he's saying, so I can't really say anything else right now because, honestly, we just don't know. Nobody does. Uh, so rides would be more expensive, which would significantly reduce the number of rides people could take and in turn the number of drivers needed to provide those trips. Uh, that may not really be true. Rides probably will get more expensive, but, um, you know, people are still going to uh, ride. They're going to want to get to and from places. It's convenient. It's easy. It's quick. A lot of people use it for a lot of different reasons. Uh, so that might not necessarily be true. Uh, it could be partially. Uh, Uber would not be as widely available to riders, and drivers would lose the flexibility they have if they became employees. Okay. This is more important than what I think is what drivers think. Okay, well, let's hear more from drivers. So again, write in the comments what you think. Uh, in public surveys over the last decade, the vast majority of drivers have said they don't want to be employees because of how much they value flexibility. I don't think it's just flexibility. Flexibility is a great thing, yes, but that's what you focus on because that's what you can offer drivers. But again, what about price co uh, price competition or the ability to set your price or repeat customers or being able to uh, set your own? There's the ability to do that. Use the pin code. One of the things you could do is if somebody wanted to book you as a driver, you could give them your information and then just put in a pin and you would be paired with that driver and with that rider once the ride started and you can plug in the destination uh, on where you want to go you could probably even set up the money and how they want to pay on all through that you know that's something that you could have in your app and the ability to do so drivers could get the ability to have a clientele now that would be a bigger step towards independent contractor uh why they don't do that but again that's just something that they could try doing um a recent survey commissioned by uber mm -hmm. and other companies found that two out of three dr app drivers would stop driving if their flexibility was compromised what are your thoughts right now would you stop driving on that comment in the live chat now um let me know because i'd like to know uh i would say depending on how the flexibility looked or how the schedule looked um yeah, it probably would have some impact on mine. Because uh, like I said, I like to go out when I can. But depending on if it's set up like Amazon or how it was in New York City when you could choose the shifts and things like that, that might be a little better. So you can still have some flexibility there. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. All right, so it says, this is because they understand the trade-offs between traditional employment and app work. Unlike traditional jobs, drivers have a total freedom to choose when and how they drive so they can fit it into their work or so they can fit their work around their life, not the other way around. Yeah, that's good. That's why drivers are probably driving for the most part is that they can go out, they can make money when they want. And if you're in school, if you're retired, if you're working part time to, to supplement income, if you're working full time, if you're chasing a dream, whatever it might be, it's flexible and it's good that way. Uh, anyone who's been fired after having to miss a shift or who's been forced to choose between school and work will tell you that this type of freedom has a real value and simply doesn't exist with traditional jobs. Yeah, that can be really true, especially if you have a bad boss um, when you have to miss a shift or something like that. But what about the whole thing with deactivations and especially when it comes to false claims and accusations against you? What about that? Um, so while I couldn't disagree with our critics about the solution, I do think they are right about many of the problems. Okay, so at least you're admitting that there are problems. So the freedom to work whenever you want comes with a serious drawback. When the worst happens, too often you are on your own. And yeah, that's pretty much been proven because there's so many people in the gig economy, not just Uber, but in the entire gig economy, that if something happens you can't go out there and make money. It's not like when you have a job with employee protections that you can take sick time or paid time off 
or even unemployment. Yes, I know the last couple of months, many drivers are unemployment and that's good, but that's not something that's necessarily going to last unless you're in a state that has Uber and Lyft drivers uh, be able to receive employees that are unemployment uh, like New York State. So it says uh, there has been historically been little to no paid support for independent workers if they couldn't work, if they want to take a vacation or more important, if they got sick. So that's true. But the difference is independent workers and independent contractors have the ability to set a lot of their own things so then they can plan if something does happen, if they want to take vacation, if they want to take time off or if they are sick and have to call off. They won't get anything for that time because they're not working, but they're still able to plan from previous jobs. That's where the difference lies. So there has to be a third way for gig workers, but we need to get specific because we need more than new ideas. We need new laws. Okay, well, yeah, you probably need both because there doesn't need to be some protections with laws itself. Um, so the current system is binary, meaning that each time a company provides additional benefits to independent workers, the less independent they become. I disagree with that statement uh, because you can do things and put it a certain way that it's just built into the system and you're still allowing the ability to have independent work, be an independent contractor and so forth. So I don't agree with that statement. Um, but hey, again, if, if you are writing this with the truth of your mind, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. I'm just giving that constructive criticism. Uh, that creates more uncertainty and risk for the company, which is a main reason why they need new laws and can't act entirely on our own. Okay, so I will say I understand that. Um, so when it comes to them trying to have their pay system a certain way, if they are doing certain things that look like it's an employee on the outside, uh, you know, again, you can build it in where it's not going to take away from that freedom or the independent contractor. You just have to put it in the right way. And yes, certain laws do need to be changed in order to make something happen like that. So, okay. Uh, COVID hit them hard and now they're desperate. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, trip. <laughs> Trip allows you to build your customer base. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm not going to say anything on Trip right now. I'm, I'm not going there. <laughs> uh, maybe down the road, but I'm not talking about that right now. Um, it's time to move beyond this false choice. As a start, all gig economy companies need to pay for benefits, should be more honest about the reality of the work, and must strengthen the rights and voice of its workers. Okay, yes. Uh, as a start, all gig economy companies should need, have a pay for benefits structure. That would be great because, yeah, people who want sick time, people who want paid time off, people who need it because of something, um, yeah, there should be could be something set up. I, I don't want to say should, but I think could be set up um, because, again, I want to make sure that it's going to be beneficial for all drivers because sometimes benefits – may not be beneficial for that particular driver. It's going to come down to maybe an option to choose or something like that. Um, so, yeah, they do need to strength, strengthen the rights and voice of workers, 100%. They need to have avocation um, and the ability to advocate for other drivers out there and be heard. That's the biggest thing because even if you have a voice for Uber and Lyft as a driver, and I could tell you that, you're still not heard, even though you can have a voice that can go on to somebody in the company. It just doesn't go anywhere. It's never elevated. It's never put into practice. Nothing. So prefer not to be an employee by Uber, like the vehicle right off. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100 percent. I want to know how to remove my profile from Uber. I, you know what? I don't know genuine because I know like they restructured the app and there's some issues trying to get to the profile. And uh, so I'm not sure you might have to go try going back in the app. They may have changed it um, or maybe even getting hold of Uber support might take a little bit of time, but it might be something that you could. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right. So I'm proposing that gig economy companies be required to establish benefit funds, which give workers cash that they can use for the benefits they want, like health insurance or paid time off. 
So it sounds like you may have the option to choose, which would be a good thing. Uh, so independent workers in any state that passes this law could take money out of every hour they work, they put in. All gig companies would be required to participate so that workers can build up benefits even if they switch between apps. Now, I can understand when you're talking about these portable benefits, if you work for Uber, uh, if you work Uber, uh, then Lyft, Postmates, then DoorDash, uh, then Shipt. If you're working all these and you can kind of take them back and forth, that wouldn't be too bad. But again, you want to do it right now, come out with something. Do something that's going to be better that makes other companies say, hey, that's a really good idea. Maybe I'll follow suit. And then you're raising the bar and other people either have to catch up or maybe then laws raise with that bar. So that's one thing. Plus also you're creating a better competition. You're creating what people want. They're gonna to flock to that company. Other companies are gonna take note of that and say, all right, well, why are they having such success? We need to change something and do something. So that's the other way that they can look at it. Instead of saying, oh no, we can't do that right now because uh, if we do that, then other companies aren't. And so they're not gonna have that cost. Well, you know, is it f something that, that should be done or not? All right, had this been law in all 50 states, uh, Uber would have contributed $655 million to benefit funds last year alone. Taking one example, we estimate that a driver in Colorado averaging over 35 hours per week would have accrued approximately $1,350 in benefit funds in 2019. That's enough to cover two weeks of paid time off or the median annual premium payment for subsidized health insurance available through an existing Uber partnership. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say all this is true. I don't know. I don't know how he's getting these, how they're getting these numbers or not. Um, that's part of the issue there. I'm just going to say if this is true, okay. So they would have contributed $655 million to benefit funds last year alone. Um, so if a person in Colorado, and yes, it's going to matter market to market because everything is different. So if a person driving Colorado averaged over 35 hours, they would accrue approximately 1,350 in benefits. Yeah, so that's not too bad. You're getting two weeks paid time off or you're able to pay for health insurance if you need it. Um, so again, how that looks, I don't know. How it's set up, I'm not entirely sure. I don't know where they're getting the numbers from, but that sounds pretty good. Uh, crazy math, yeah, exactly, 100%. It's like, where where do those numbers come from? I don't know. Um, if you, I, I understand this is an op-ed, so yeah, they're not gonna put in that type of, uh, where they get these numbers from. So like I said, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that's true. Uh, I don't know if it is or not. It's just looking good where he's saying. So let's just give him that. What's up, Double M? How you doing? <laughs> What's trip? It's tripping there, tipping <laughs> or tripping. <laughs> All right. Why just give drivers money and let them decide what to do with it rather than requiring companies to provide specific benefits to everyone? Once again, it comes down to what drivers want. That I actually like, you know, if you have the ability to opt into what you want, that's gonna be better because you have the choice. So if they're going to do some sort of flat benefit rate and say, okay, well, you can do it here, 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 and give them different options, that's probably a good thing because yes, yeah, somebody might need health insurance when another person wants paid time off. So it's really gonna come down to driver to driver. And I like that because you have the option to choose. Again, what it's actually gonna look like in practice could be a whole different thing. So when you may ask many policymakers which benefit they think is most important to drivers, the answer is always almost healthcare. Now here's the problem with that. Policymakers and legislators have no idea what Uber and Lyft drivers, what delivery drivers, what shoppers, anybody in the gig economy actually want or need. They're out of touch. They don't know. They've never worked as a uh, driver or a gig worker in any way, shape or form. So policymakers should be asking drivers, getting drivers input. Some way, somehow they should be reaching out and getting drivers to share opinions on how things can be improved or what benefit they most need. So. Is it always almost healthcare? I don't know. What do you think? What is, uh, actually that is a good question. What is the key benefit that you wanna see from Uber, Lyft, or any gig economy? 
uh, work or gig platform, sorry. Um, what benefit would you want to see the most? Do you want to see healthcare? Do you want to see paid time off? Do you want to see more money? What do you want to see? Let me know. Um, so yet when we ask drivers which benefits they most want, healthcare doesn't even crack the top five. And again, that could be true. Uh, I haven't really seen too many things when it comes out to what they want because some of that's never been published. So that's all internal. Um, sometimes things get published, but you don't necessarily know where those statistics or who is interviewed or anything like that. Um, but again, there these uh, executives again are not in driving. They're not doing the front line. They're not down there doing the dirty work. Uh, so they're not necessarily in touch when it comes to it either because they're just not having that comprehension. They're trying to run a business. So yeah, that's part of that there. Um, so that's most likely because most drivers already have some form of health insurance, whether through another job, the Affordable Care Act, or a family member. And that I'm going to say is probably true. I don't know 100% for sure if that is. Um, you can click the link there. Um, I don't want to get too off topic or anything searching through different things. So if you want to check that out, you can. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are working with another job. They're getting either Medicare, Medicaid, something through the Affordable Care Act, um, or possibly a family member. A lot of people get, get insurance that way. So um, is that how the majority of drivers are? I'm not sure. 80-20 um, split. Yeah, exactly. More money. That's what I want. Yeah, more money. Uh, you have your own health coverage. Uh, more money like the 80-20 split or 75-25. All right, yeah, so right here, looks like number one, more money. And I'm sure that's exactly what most drivers are saying, is more money. I'm sure some people are saying healthcare. I'm sure some people are saying sick time, paid time off, whatever it might be. Um, but again, that's gonna come down to more money because if you're not working, but you're getting paid, that's still more money. Uh, so I'm sure that's pro probably the number one answer. Uh, again, only a few people answered that, but that's pretty much a consensus right there. So um, business on the others thought Americans were against slave wages. You know, you bring up a good point there when it comes down to it. You know, we talked about how the IRS uh, puts their tax deduction at 58 cents a mile. And if you're getting 66, 66 71, 80 cents a mile, it's not much more than what the tax deduction is. So um, yeah, that, Again, we can break down things a lot more too. Uh, but for this, I just want to kind of stick to this article, what was going on with that, and hear what you guys are having to think and say. Um, so driving passengers or delivering food on a bike comes with real risks. States should require all gig companies to provide medical and disability coverage for injuries occurred on the job, creating a baseline safety net that we cannot give drivers today without risking their independent status under the law. I don't know how true that last part is. I don't know why you couldn't come up with whatever insurance companies you're working with and have something that says if you're injured while online, then it will be covered or the insurance will pay out. It's not workers comp. It can be something else. So if you're looking at it as workers comp or something like that, then you're having the wrong ability. Now, again, I don't I can't speak fully on that because I don't know how the laws would be in play. I don't know how insurance companies would be in play when it comes down to it. But that sounds like they could probably work something out because they have many drivers out there and I'm sure a few companies would probably be bit biting at the chomp to try to get that uh type of coverage or that type of work when it came to an agreement between Uber and said insurance company. So they'll be, they'd probably be making a little bit of money on that one. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't know how the law would be when it comes to um, these types of medical and disability coverage for injuries incurred. I know like, again, workers comp, yes, that's an employee benefit. So it's a little bit different, but there are certain things that they could probably do when it comes down to it that would look similar to workers comp or something like that, but still provide independent status. Um, if you have more information on that too, comment on that. We also need new laws that prevent companies from denying independent workers opportunities based on their race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, 
or other protected characteristic. Shockingly, that fundamental measure of equality is not fully enshrined into law for all American workers today. I 100% agree with that statement. If that's true, I don't know what states don't have that when it comes to an independent worker um, or don't have the protections, but everybody should be protected when it comes down to it, no matter what, it doesn't matter. Everybody should be at that level playing field uh, when it comes to being or having an opportunity. Um, there are changes we should make on our own. Okay, good, start. Uber will start and I hope others will follow. Put your money where your mouth is, Dara. Uh, to begin with, we have uh, to be more transparent about what drivers make and the realities of the work. Um, that's really nothing. <laughs> All right, well, you don't need to tell what drivers make. There's, I mean, you can if you want. That's not going to make a difference to me because... I know what I make, I know what the average in my area is, and I know I make more than that when I go out. I've also been driving a lot longer. I know the ins and outs. I know when to go online. I know where to look. I know where to go. And that's stuff that you learn as you've been an experienced driver in your market. Um, and most veteran drivers will probably say the exact same thing, that they're able to make more because they know when and where and how to drive. Um, as you're new, you got to figure that out and what's going to be beneficial for you. Uh, so transparent on what drivers make, that might sound really good to a new driver, but if they're making shockingly less than that, they're going to be very discouraged. And how are they going to be able to make that? They might not really understand. Uh, so the realities of the work, that would be a good thing. Just check out YouTube. <laughs> There's plenty of different things on there, the realities of the work. Um, my channel, Dustin, um, many other channels out there who show that. Now, I know that can be biased in certain things because, you know, dash cam videos, the bad ones get more views. So a lot of people see those. But, you know, I've posted videos of dash cam where we're having a good time, good conversation or funny conversation or whatever. Uh, so most of the time, yeah, it's good. Um, but the other ones get the views. So, you know, um, all right. So it says... Uh, where was it? Uh, that's why we launched a new earnings estimator using historical data to give drivers a clear view of what they can expect to earn in their area before they even sign up. Again, something like that, that's not really something that's, I mean, would you even want to see that? Do you even care? Is that something that is a, of benefit to you, seeing what other drivers in the area are making? To me, I, I don't have any, I, I just... I wouldn't care about that, but that's me. You know, I do, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm sure you're probably doing what you're doing. Um, so yeah, what do you think? Um, not what the, I Uber a cash out fee waiting on them to charge interest. <laughs> nice. Uh, you will be paid better for picking strawberries. Probably <laughs> you have a company that will fight, fight you. They are big tech and big lawyers. Oh yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna go to try to go to war, hundred um, percent. I don't care. I can be a thorn in their side though. Um, I really don't care. <laughs> That's the good thing. I'll voice my opinion. Like I said, I'll, I'll I invite Dara on here, but I won't have a constructive conversation. Yeah, I'll get in on his. Uh, I'll get in on it, and I'll ask questions that you know other people won't. But I also don't want something that's done by legal. I want to have a real conversation. Uh, where we're sitting down, the questions weren't vetted beforehand. We're sitting down, we're building off the conversation. And like I said, I want to have a constructive conversation. So again, Dara, if you ever find this, please come on the channel. Let's do something that can help us drivers, help you as a company and your company, make it a win-win and have other drivers during a live stream be able to question things and get real responses that, again, is not vetted by legal. Just saying. All right. Um, that's my, I might go off on a little rant again. We'll see. Um, but we also need drivers to do a better job acting on driver concerns. Uh, yeah, you definitely need to. So that starts with holding ourselves accountable. We commit to surveying every single active driver in the, community, or in the country about what's working and what's not to publicly release the results, no matter what they say. So again, that is this right here. Um, so yes, I'm going to be filling that out in a little bit. 
Now, they need to do a lot more than this because, uh, or they need to do a lot more than just this because it's only, what, six questions and then three things where you can type in answers. Um, I can understand that they want to do uh, an easier job so when they're sorting through all of the um, penned responses, they're able to put that in a little bit better. So I can understand that, but yeah, they need to survey everybody, but they also need to make changes and who's going to hold them accountable. They're gonna hold themselves accountable. Well, put your money where your mouth is. Uh, we commit to surveying every single active driver in the country about what's working, what's not publicly releasing the results. That's good. I wanna see what the results are. I wanna know what other drivers' concerns are that don't necessarily watch YouTube because drivers who are watching YouTube and even riders who are watching this channel, um, you know, that's one segment that's not going to encompass everybody. It probably has a wide array of views and opinions and different points. But again, I want to know what everybody's saying. Um, so no matter what they say, yeah, you're probably going to get a lot of hate there. <laughs> um, and then it says with the upcoming election, we commit to helping every driver register to vote so that independent workers have a stronger voice in our democracy. Well, I agree with that, but I really don't care if Uber is telling me to vote. Um, I already vote. I think everybody should vote if you are able to. Uh, I think that you should have a voice and you should voice your vote. Um, but you should also look at the candidates in full, not necessarily looking at the media. Take that out. Research issues that you're passionate about and look how they want to represent. Um, so that's going to make the best informed. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't do that. They're swayed. But that's the best way you can. That's all I always say about the voting. But when it comes to this, Uber, really? Just say, go and vote. Do something like that. All right, for many people, nothing short of reclassifying all drivers as employees will be enough. Will be enough. Uh, that is the thrust of several lawsuits against Uber in the wake of the new California law, known as Assembly Bill 5. We're backing a November ballot initiative in California that would keep drivers as independent contractors while requiring us to provide new benefits, which is also known as Prop 22. Anybody in California, I highly suggest reading Prop 22 in its entirety because you are going to see if it's going to be beneficial for you or not. And some of the language that they use is a lot different than what they use on their website for what is vote yes on 22 or something like that. Um, I don't remember what the uh, that is, um, but yeah, that is something that you want to check out and you want to read in full uh, so you can make the best decision when going to the ballot in November and, or I'm sorry, when you go to the, um, when you go to elect in November and you can put that on your ballot measure, whether you approve or deny that. Um, Dara wants all drivers to vote because of, from what I understand, Uber, yeah. Yeah, that is exactly probably part of the reason. Um, and they're going to do, Uber is going to be ramping up a lot of advertisement when it comes to Prop 22 and trying to get people to vote yes on that. So if you're in California and you see a vote yes on Prop 22 as an advertisement on this channel, please comment and let me know because I really want to know that. Uh, so that's part of the location-based ads thing and what's going on with that. But I'd be really interesting how they're going to try to um, blast people to vote yes or no when it comes down to the November, November ballot. Uh, but like I said, if you are in California, I highly recommend reading that in its entirety. It's not really the best language. Uh, but it's something that you should read so you know exactly what it says in there versus saying, oh, I want to be an independent contractor. Oh, I want to be an employee because there's a lot more nuances than that in there. Uh, so you want to know what's going on. Um, Chris Dyer, what's going on? Uh, Payman, how you doing? Until I hear drivers and companies really hashing out these issues in an attitude to equal partnership, I expect just more of the similar silliness. Yeah, you know, that that's payment. I agree with you. I would love to see drivers actually out up in these discussions and being able to have a real voice when it comes down to it uh that is what i'd love to see and you know we can talk all we want 
we can try to come up with similar opinions and ideas to have a mass more massive effect which can actually play into it but um yeah unfortunately sometimes uh right now it doesn't look like that they wrote prop 22 essentially they had their lawyers write it uh it is in their benefit so that's why i say you need to read that if you're in california and then the lawmakers you know the problem with the law or with california is they're hurting for tax revenue right now they are hurting in fact uh rogan i was listening to one of his podcasts from last week and he was one of the reasons why he's moving from california to texas is because one of the proposed one of the tax proposals is a tax height of 54 percent on the wealthy now yeah that sounds like it's a lot but if you make over a certain amount you're considered wealthy now here's the thing how long until they bring that down further and you know okay we'll start at anybody making over a million dollars a year that sounds great but then what happens when they're like well let's bring it down to a hundred thousand a year now you're hitting some drivers there are a couple drivers out there that make six figures so what then let's say well we're going to bring it down to thirty-five uh thousand we're going to tax tax higher because we need to make it up well what happens and this is part of it they're trying to get tax revenue i said that before i'll say it again this is part of the reason because they are looking to bring tax revenue in when it comes to unemployment when it comes to other things they're a state that is hurting um <laughs> What's up? Good job. Uh, thanks, Dylan. Or thanks, Double. I'm sorry. Um, like to see more safety features. Riders have to validate identity like us. I, Chris, I agree with you right there. Absolutely. I think they need to be able to. They need to be able to take a picture of their ID. Anybody over 18 is going to have an ID. I think you need to take a picture of that so you have that on file. You got to fill that out. It's AI checked. So that means. Uh, they check it. If something comes back where, um, you know, there's some sort of discrepancy between the picture and what the AI thought when you put your input for creating an account, then it would just be manually reviewed. I think that would be a great thing, especially with some of the problems, because if you look at the safety report and these things like Sammy, Sammy's Law, the safety report says about 50% of the issues are caused by drivers while the other 50 percent of issues are caused by riders so yes it's a problem on both sides but yet sammy's law only looks at passenger safety and doesn't look at driver safety so that's one of the issues there and i agree with you 100 percent they should be um looked at that way uh and i don't know why uber isn't ju uh i don't know why but Uber isn't jury judge of DUI. If a driver is under the influence, there should be a feature for that. Um, yeah, yeah, they should. I mean, first of all, there should be zero tolerance. I mean, something like that, um, if there's something like that, maybe they put something in and says, please go to a local police station and get tested and then show us the results. Um, but they also shouldn't necessarily, I mean, unfortunately, it's one of those things that it's a he said, she said thing. And when somebody says, oh, this driver appears to be drunk behind the wheel and swerving and all that, well, you can also use easy deduction and say, well, this driver has given 20 rides over the last X amount of hours. The chance of him driving drunk is probably extremely minimal. Um, so I understand where they're taking the safety with that. But again, when it's a false report, yeah, it's a real issue. There's There should be some sort of, of protection there when it comes down to it. Um, I like the safety features, though. I do agree with those. Um, like the uh, You like the part about Dara getting us unemployment. Um, the taxpayers bailed you out. Yeah, 100% right there. Uh, he rider, or to let the police know if you can't, can find real quick and let the police deal with it. If under the influence, but you are okay with them to take you to your destination uh, and last allow the feature an app that lets drivers choose that the ride is being recorded and notifies the rider would make ride share industry safer i like that idea actually yeah that would be a really good one um, the other thing i think that they should do is the pin code should be mandatory 
It should be mandatory for everybody because you know you're going to be getting the correct rider and driver and you aren't going to have something like what happened to that girl uh, who is the, the main cause of Sammy's Law. Um, so you're not going to have that issue. Yes, they have a lot of things in place, um, but it's going to take that whole say my name, what's my name, that whole debacle out. It's going to take a lot of issues when it comes to false reports like, oh, my driver didn't take me. Well, you gave the right pin code. He took you. He or she took you. Um, and then you also know that that is the correct rider getting in your car. So that is always a good thing. Then you could take the pin code further because, again, like I said, if you wanted to allow drivers to have a clientele, then you can still do it through the app. You just have to give a pin code that the passenger can set up. Then you can enter the destination and boom, there you go. Now you got a ride that you have a clientele base on. So that can also be used there. Um, great, thanks for asking. Thanks for the ice. Uh, been a new driver for ha uh, half year. Nice. Appreciate the info throughout the time. Well, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> um, oh, Chell, what's going on? <laughs> Californians can mostly thank Arnold Schwartz <laughs> and his voters for half of their problems. <laughs> He's part of it, but Gavin Newsom is part of that too. Here's a safety feature request. No ride requests while the vehicle is moving. That would be good. Yeah, no ride requests. Uh, well... Hold a payment. Can you explain that a little bit more? Do you mean, uh, what's up, Mappy? When you say that, do you mean like if you're just driving around and you get the ping or are you when, um, like, are you talking about a ride request in terms of like a multiple stop, um, or something like that? Uh, what do you mean exactly? I think that, I mean, yeah, looking at your phone and trying to decide if, that is a good ride to take by looking at the driver's star, or I'm sorry, the rider's star rating. Um, if you're able to see that information versus, you know, the pickup and drop off, if you're in California, the estimated fare, those types of things to make sure that's a good, um, you know, that's a good fare. Uh, yeah, I think there, it, it is unsafe to look at your phone, but you should have your phone somewhere in the general vicinity. Um, I mean, that that's, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, when the vehicle is moving, driver's hand should stay on the wheel. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's still a tough one, though. If, <sighs> yeah, I mean, anytime you look away from the, from it, from, you know, what's going on in front of you, you know, even for a half second, a second or something, you know, it can cause accidents, it can cause issues like that. Um, but then, yeah, there, I mean, there, there's a lot of different things there. Um, it just might be hard though, because there's a lot of vehicles moving at that point. Um, but that is a good that is a good safety feature. That's a good point, um, especially when you have to look away if you're driving. Um, all right. So back to the article. It says some have argued that we should scrap independent work altogether because of its shortcomings. But if we eliminate this work, how do we expect the millions of Americans who have been doing gig work to stay afloat when few companies are hiring? To a point that that's one that's. That's a very uh, loaded statement there. Um, so if gig workers cannot, or if gig workers want to keep their current flexibility and get new benefits, shouldn't we give them the best of both worlds instead of asking them to choose the lesser of two evils? I agree with that. I just don't want to see Prop 22 all over the country. I want to see something where drivers have a say, and that's going to be beneficial for drivers and also Uber and the other gig uh, app platforms. If you have that ability to truly make it a win-win for everybody, that's going to be better. Not just, oh, well, we're going to look at it this way. We're going to give you a little bit here, and the rest is going to be our benefit. You know, that's not going to be the, the good way to do it. Have drivers come in, hear them out, have real conversations, and work together for an agreement that will make it better for drivers and that will make it better for these companies. It can be done. Um, so during this moment of crisis, I fundamentally believe platforms like Uber can fuel an economic recovery by quickly giving people flexible work to get back on their feet. But this opportunity will be lost if we ignore the obvious lessons of the pandemic and fail to ensure independent workers have a stronger safety net. 
This is the time for Uber uh, to come together with government to raise the standard of work for all. Should also have drivers in there, so it should be, this statement should be revised to say, this is the time for Uber to come together with drivers and with government to raise the standard of work for all. Um, Dara, put drivers in there. Uh, the opportunity is now and the responsibility is ours. The world has changed and we must change with it. Um, his usual sign off lately. Um, so yes, that was the entire op-ed. Again, if you wanna read through this, link is in the description. There are different articles as well that you can link to within this article that can give some more information on certain things. So when they're talking about don't wanna be employees, survey, what I said, or what was down here. Um, there's a lot of different articles there. Um, but yes, this is the op-ed right here. Um, what's the question mark, Matt? What's up? Not much. What's going on? <laughs> um, yeah, what's the question mark though, Matt? Uh, give us an option not to receive ride requests for less than $9. That would be good. That would be really good. Having something where there's a minimum base. Um, I mean, the minimum ride fare should probably be higher. Well, it, it shouldn't probably. It should be higher than what it is um, all around um, for sure. Make five, oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see double M. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I wanna know what you guys think on that. Um, you know, he does make some good points. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on other things, and then there's other things that, you know, if you wanna put your money where your mouth is and start making changes now, do it. Don't, uh, don't say, oh, we're gonna poll everybody and then release the results. Okay, that's good. That's good to know to be more transparent. 100%, that's good. Uh, to know what the realities of the work are. Again, if you want to see that, talk to other drivers. Talk to other drivers in your area. That's going to be the best thing you're going to know if you are a new driver or somebody evaluating it. Then yes, check out YouTube for other information as well too. There's so many different uh, YouTubers out there that are talking about this um, and showing different things. And yes, some of it can be the worst of the worst, uh, but that's also very educational because you can expect... Uh, or you can can think and plan ahead if something ever happened uh, like that. Now, you can expect that those rides probably won't happen, but there's a very real possibility, and it's always good to be informed and have a plan of action in the event something crazy does happen. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Hooray, we're taxis now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like I said, what do you, what do you think about this? Um, like I said, I think there's good points. I think there's points that you need to work with. And the biggest thing is, Dara, you need to have drivers on board talking, working together with, uh, with Uber, with Shipt, with Instacart, with all these gig economy platforms and make it truly a win-win for all to make it better for the drivers, the delivery shoppers, the couriers, all the people and also uh, the companies themselves. I'm not gonna say let's screw Uber because if you say screw Uber and then they go under or something, you're out all that. So again, that's not something that would be beneficial for drivers in the long run. Um, when it comes down to what's going on in the here and now, it's something where there can be a win-win and there's a lot of things that you can do now when it comes down to putting certain benefits out there that still keep drivers independent the flexibility, and you can work it into the system where you put it as all drivers get this particular type of incentive, putting it in there. More people are going to be looking at that. They're probably going to be happier. Uh, so you can change your perspective from what you, what you are now, which is not very good. When people ask, what do you think of Uber's image? It's usually a very negative one. Um, you know, doing these little things can help shift the perspective and the focus where if drivers are happier, they're going to be happier on the road, riders are going to be happier. And again, that's a win, win, win now because you're including a better ride for the riders. That means they're going to come back to your platform again, and you're going to make more money. So let's look at it that way. Let's see what we can do that way. Um, you're going to move to where you are. Oh, for uh, for that. 
Uh, don't bite the hand that feeds. The fact that they're opening to the talk is a good first step. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, I, I, if Dara sees this, you know, I, I want to be constructive. I want to hit issues that haven't been raised that I've seen when it comes to uh, that this this video that I was talking about right here. And again, the link is in the description there um, where it was, I think, five drivers or something that were on the call with him. And also when he was talking to Harry on the Rideshare Guys channel uh, a little bit ago. You know, I want to sit down, but I want to do it as an interview or a back and forth where it's constructive. I can get more information in terms of some of the claims that he said here in terms of um, why they can't do things right now without changes in the law. I mean, he did touch upon that in Harry's um, video, but I want to press that issue further. And then also I want drivers to be able to put in questions and talk about things in a real sit down back and forth and discuss the hard issues, but come up with solutions. It's like I said, yeah, don't bite the hand, that, or like Chris said, don't bite the hand that feeds you. You know, you want to have benefits on both sides where it's gonna benefit both the drivers and the company, because if they're going to flourish, you're going to flourish. Um, I get a lot of fares with surge pricing, that's why you're making good money. Yeah, certain markets, surge is great. Certain markets, you're getting quests, you're getting promotions, you're getting a lot of different things when it comes down to it. Um, there's a lot of people making some money in markets, so it's just gonna depend on where, because other markets, it's still very, very dry. There's too many drivers out on the road right now, and a lot of that probably was partially because of all these uh, unemployment benefits that have uh, disappeared and not really sure if they're going to come back, at least in the foreseeable future. Now, the whole $400, that's again going to be up to states. So some states may not even do that. Um, I know for New York State, they're still trying to figure out what's going on. They're probably going to try to do it, um, but I don't know for sure. So anybody in New York, I don't know. Uh, but as far as I know, I think it's retroactive. I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, there's a lot of math that is still kind of dicey at certain things. So um, yeah, there's a lot of things there when it comes down to it. All right, and then um, going on, Uber also put this out in the newsroom. Uh, link will be in the description below. So this is gonna kind of go a little bit further on to what the outlines are setting for priorities with the industry and the government action that should be improved to, uh, or that will improve the quality of work for the millions of independent contractors and workers. So if you wanna go through this, this is probably gonna be a good thing to read through. Um, and then going on to this, uh, these are some of the things that they're saying changes. So we'll just go through this real quick. And then the other thing, like I said, we're going to fill this out. And I want to hear what your thoughts are, because I'm going to put your thoughts as well into these down here. Um, so start thinking about this and get it in your head, because these are some answers that I want to put in. And all Uber drivers, make sure you fill out this form as well. Um, so it says, what would you change about Uber's working together priorities? Uh, which we're kind of essentially going to go over right here. Um, and then going on to the second one, what would you add to Uber's working together priorities? So let's talk about what we would add. Um, that's where I really want to know what you guys are going to put, because I'm going to put it in, and I hope that they don't uh, have a character limit. Uh, this better not be like Twitter or YouTube, where they have a 200 character limit, and I forget what Twitter's is. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? So yes, these three questions right here, put in the comments what you wanna see. I'm gonna put them in on this as well and submit it to Uber. Um, and then like I said, fill that out and put in what you want. Um, so going back to this real quick, but again, ponder those few questions. Um, so this is saying, we wanna to contribute to funds that workers can individually direct towards the benefits that matter most to them. We are asking states to require our industry to accrue such funds. So I get where they want the government to step in and do that, and Uber and the industry does have to do that. But again, I don't think that you have to wait for action from the government to happen. I think if you really wanna make a change and you really wanna be a leader, I do think that you have the ability to start these things now or put them into practice 
or sit down with drivers and get the ball rolling when it comes to how it can be beneficial for both. That's what I'm really set and focused on is having it beneficial for both the company and the driver or the gig worker, whatever company they may be working with. Um, so it says we want to provide workers with occupational ac accident insurance that covers medical expenses and disability payments for accidents and injuries that occur while driving or delivering. We are asking states to require our industry to provide such coverage. Um, again, I don't know how that could be um, not done without, say, working with particular insurance companies or anything like that when it comes to um, certain insurance or on the job uh, accidents or anything like that, um, or well online. I know, like I said, with workers comp, yes, that is something that would be an employee benefit. So yeah, the government would have to be in on that and make some changes to do that. But I think you could probably work together to have something with some sort of company that will work and you know do something like that um, when it comes down to it. So it says, then we are asking that all states extend the laws to protect independent workers from discrimination, harassment, and prejudice. You can't say anything against that statement. That is 100% a good statement right there. Um, again, everybody should be on an equal level when it comes to opportunity. Um, so I think that should go without saying. And the fact that some states don't have those laws yet, they should. Um, we will undertake a national survey of all drivers and delivery people to gather feedback on what we're doing and how we can improve. Okay, that's good. But make sure you actually take that into account and make true changes. So it's one thing to just do a survey and release that information, but it's a whole nother thing to actually implement these changes that drivers want or think that would be better for them. Um, we will engage with representatives who can speak credibility, uh, credibly to the interests of drivers and delivery people, representatives with whom we can have an ongoing conversation and who can hold us accountable. Okay. Is that representatives and who are policymakers and legislators in the government? Or is this actually drivers? Because from what I heard before, it sounded like it was policymakers and lawmakers and legislators and people in government. Um, that would be good to be on that front when, they, when drivers and Uber and these other companies come together and say, look, this is what we, we want to do. Uh, can we have these changes? Can we look at these changes? Because then you're a united front. Um, but if this does not include drivers, if this does not include delivery people, couriers, uh, shoppers, then you know, you're know both going to be out of touch. And again, representatives from a lawmaker side of things, they're not going to have any knowledge. They're going to be so out of touch, they're not going to know. They're going to be like, oh, how can we collect taxes? That's probably where they're at. Um, so again, that should include drivers if it doesn't. Um, we will do our part to realize the nation's uh, participatory democrat, de de democrat, oh my God, democracy. Woo. It's getting late. <laughs> democracy by helping every eligible driver or delivery person on our platform to register to vote. And as Lisa may have pointed out, it could just be so that they have to vote um, for AB5, Prop 22, that whole thing. Uh, and then if it goes to a national uh, or state by state, um, yeah, that could be something when it comes down to it. Um, but everybody should be registered to vote anyways. Um, I don't think that they need to make an initiative to get people to vote. I think you should just do, hey, today's election day or we're coming up on election day. Make sure you register or if you aren't already. Or would you like us to register you? Okay, but you don't need to make that a priority. There's no reason, um, at least in my opinion. There's so many other places that do that already. Um, so where data is available and reliable, we will provide transparency to drivers on what they can expect to earn. By the end of 2020, we commit to making the earnings estimator available to more than 40% of active, active US drivers in more than 30 cities. Okay, so that's probably the top 30 cities in the country, um, which will account for 40% of drivers. 
and you know like i said that's all right i mean it it really isn't going to matter i mean at least in my opinion because it's what you're making because it's not like what other people are making um you know you can gauge how you're doing compared to the average but again it's not really going to be there but if you want to provide transparency i want to see how does the algorithm work i'd really like to know that and i did a video on that about how there's a lawsuit going on in the uk right now about that uh, and hopefully we'll get more information because if you want to give people equal opportunity to make money that means your algorithm should not pick and choose who gets better rides versus who doesn't so things like passenger and driver ratings can implement who's getting what ride uh, if you have certain things on your driving record in terms of false reports or allegations or any issues um, that can downgrade you um, there's a lot of factors that could be playing into if you're doing well on the road or not and if you're getting rides or not um, so that is something that i would love to see more transparency on because that is going to tell you what is going on and how you can improve your driver rating or your driver driving level to get better rides i think that's something that people can achieve especially if you know you're not the best driver out there and you want to improve it will give you a better ability to improve so it can actually be a benefit for drivers um at, at least if you set up something that can um put you into a better level um if you're going to do these levels if not cut that crap and put everybody as is um and then also you know all the changes that california has make that nationwide that should have been nationwide already so the ability to set your own fare rate up to 5x that should be already across the entire states you should be able to see the pickup and drop off because if you're 10 15 minutes away and it's a three minute trip or you know down the street or whatever that's not necessarily in your best interest to take that um so yeah all the changes that they made in california should be across the board in the entire country um I don't know why that hasn't happened yet. I really think it should. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, driver has a dash cam. Should be looked at before deactivation. Yeah, absolutely. So if there's a dash cam, something like that should be. There should be some way if you get deactivated as well um, to be able to fight that or to look into things instead of them just saying, well, we elevated it to our... Uh, safety team and the decision is final well you really didn't provide any information there you kept it as hush hush as possible so where's the transparency there you know that's other issues and these are all things i would talk about with you dara if you come on <laughs> so yes i would definitely love to do that and then uh the last one oh no i'm sorry the second last one uh we will continue to provide fast access to earnings and give earners the clarity and capacity to review and dispute inaccuracies well you kind of already have that with earnings um make that for false accusations make that for deactivations make that for those different types of things um because something like that can be a problem uh without being able to dispute certain things so add that in there too <laughs> um we will develop opportunities and make investments to support drivers and delivery people in lifelong learning well that just sounds like a benefit that should be up here where it says uh what matters most to them because i have my degree i went to school and if you want to go to school that would be great if you want to go back to school that's fine but for other people who don't want to go back to school or don't need to go to school or whatever it is well then that's not going to be a high option on their list that's going to be one of those things again when it comes down to do you want paid time off do you want more money do you want health care do you want education you know i'd rather or even give a stipend back saying well this is what they're going to do when it comes to payment for you you know if you continue whatever it is like in the the 
uh, Uber Pro, whatever that benefit is for going to Arizona State online, then, you know, pay that in incentive back. So instead of it just going to certain drivers who say, yeah, I want to go to school. No, that can be all drivers can get that benefit. And again, it's that equal playing field. Um, so again, I think this right here can go, whoops, hey, get off. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Hold on. I don't need that. Go back. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, I mean, th there's some changes here that's good. There's some changes that definitely need to be made. But again, yeah, like I said, this was just updated less than 24 hours ago on Uber's site. Uh, link is in the description. So if you want to read again through this whole thing, and I do recommend it only because it's going to give you some more information on things here. And now on to the fun stuff. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do this. You'd love to talk to Dara too, Lisa. <laughs> hmm. Tell Uber to clarify multi-stop trips. If you don't like them, people try and take advantage. Uh, yeah, Matt, I agree. Uh, especially when they're trying to get you to stay at grocery stores. Not what it's for. You're not a personal chauffeur. You want to do that? Give me extra money. And I want it in cash. And I want it before you leave that car. Otherwise, take your stuff and I'm in the trip. <laughs> uh, that damn OBS. What's going on? No, that wasn't OBS. That was um, the website itself. If you clicked it, it opened up the JPEG. Um, so that was not, OBS is perfectly fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's a couple of good things in here that I like. So like if the, the dash camera, it should be looked at. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through that. So yeah, I'm going to fill this out right now. Uh, I'm going to take the screen off when I'm about to submit it. If I have to do, if I do have to put any information in or show anything, um, I'll let you know. Um, just, but I don't think it is. I think it's just going to say submit and say, oh, thank you for submitting. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go through this. The only thing you need to do is the state. So I don't care about that. There's quite a few men, quite a few drivers in New York. I'm not really worried. All right. So and again, I want to know what you guys think with these uh, three. So I will put it in what your concerns are as well uh, as mine. So what would you change about Uber's working together priorities? Uh, what would you add to Uber working together priorities? And is there anything else you'd like to share with us? So again, whatever you want to put in the live chat right now, I am putting going to put that into this and submit it as well. And again, I do say submit it and put in what you'd like to put in as well and be upfront and important. So how important is not working uh, how important or not important is each of the working together priorities? Uh, driver directed funds. You know what? It's going to be important because it's going to be extra money to you. Uh, so yeah, that's something important. Uh, injury protection, you know, I'm going to put that as an important factor too. Now, these these things are going to be my opinion. If you want me to, to explain my thoughts behind it, then you can't, I will. Um, whatever you want to do on your submission, that's up to you. So if certain things are different, it's it's your, your survey. Don't let me influence you on that. Um, so driver directed funds immediately, like I said, it's going to give more money. If that $655 million that he put in that opt-ed is true, and that Colorado driver working 35 hours would accrue $1,350 in extra income for the for that year, you know what? That's extra money. That's good for you. So that can be a lot of different things. That can be more, you know more paying off your credit card. That could be paying off a student loan, paying off loan. Uh, if you fell back on something because of this whole thing, um, you know, you can kind of catch up. Uh, credit card debt, anything, you know, all those things can be good. If you got to take time off because, you know, your car's in the shop or you got, <clears throat> or something happened, you know, it's going to be good to have those types of funds available in the event something does happen. Injury protection, you know, if you're on the road and you're on the road a lot, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours, like some drivers are, it's a very real possibility you're going to get in an accident. And the more you're on the road, the more chances you're going to have to get into an accident. So having some sort of injury protection, if it's a really bad accident, and unfortunately, some of the accidents that happened over this last week, um, when I was on vacation, hearing about some of them is insane, especially like the high speed chases where a 
Uber driver was uh, killed and then another driver was also severely injured. Um, so these types of things can happen. And although nothing may have happened to you yet, that's a great thing. Hopefully nothing will, but it's definitely something good to have, especially if there's certain things that aren't covered there. Um, so having injury protection is a huge thing. Um, protection from disc discrimination, yeah, that's always important. E again, everybody should have a equal opportunity when it comes to this uh, type of platform or any of these types of platforms. Um, yeah, driver safety, 100%. Don't worry, I'll be putting that in. <laughs> um, setting better earnings expectations. Um, you know, earning expectation is kind of like a, a BS thing because it's really going to come down to you as a driver and when you're online and offline, uh, where you drive, when you drive, um, events that may be going on post-COVID, um, and when things start getting back to the real normal, not the new normal, the real normal, um, you know, you can expect certain things, but expectations versus reality are two different things. So it's really going to be up to the driver who's driving. So that to me isn't going to be a big deal as much because again, you're comparing it to the average over historical time frame. This isn't something that's saying, oh, I want more money or a better mileage rate. If that was mileage rate, that would be the most important. And that would be, in, th in this case, uh, zero, because <laughs> it would be most important. Um, prioritize, prioritizing feedback, I would say, is pretty important as well. Uh, I would not just say prioritizing, but also acting on it. Um, that's going to be a big thing. Uh, investment in lifelong earning or learning, that really, to me, is not something that I care about. Um, for others, like I said, you might be very, uh, you might want to see that. You might want to have some sort of um, college degree or college education that can help you excel in life and whatever you want to do. Um, there's nothing wrong with chasing dreams at all. So uh, if you want to do that, that might be different, different for other people. I don't expect everybody's to be like this. I don't want everybody's to be like that. But um, like I said, that's my, these are my opinions and thoughts on this. Um, I'm going to fill out the survey for me. So, um, yeah, what would you change about Uber working together priorities? Um, so first, what would I change? Um, add learning to that driver directed funds. I do not want, or as I do not. Um, yeah, what would what would you change about Uber's working together priorities? Um, oh yeah, I would have drivers. I'm gonna actually gonna put this first. Have drivers part of the conversation, and have the hard talks and come up with real solutions that benefit benefit drivers and no <laughs> and Uber as a company working together Make best changes all. Um, so I'm actually going to cut this. Put that first, because that is, to me, more important. <laughs> um, what else would I change about that? Let's see. Um, more transparency. Throughout all operations, 
Elgo rhythm. And focus on driver safety. Um, the ability to ability to dispute ability to dispute. Um, false claims and wrongful deactivations. Um, anything else on that? Anybody got something? You got to get my steak and shrimp. Everyone have a great night. Great. Have a great night, Mark. Um, sorry, but you don't go into somebody's house and try to disrespect them. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what happened there. Lisa, text me. Let me know what that is. Oh, my phone's dead. <laughs> don't, uh, text me and then I'll get it later. Uh, thanks for all the work and content. Definitely check out the link with Dar in the description. Hey, have a good night, Chris. Um, don't know if Lyft, but Uber option has an opt, an option opt in for pennies on the mile, including 1 million for 50 of four. Tell them to lock the doors <laughs> or close the doors. Uh, yeah, anything else with uh, what we would change about Uber's working together priorities? And <clears throat> again, these are um, mostly these right here. So contributing the funds, um, oh, trans being pa transparent on that. Whoops. Are. Um, multi-strip trip stops uh i think that would be i'm going to put that in is there in anything else you'd like to share with us um because that's more like operation <clears throat> knowing the delivery address would be nice able to filter out apartments okay yeah that would be good for again anything to share uh that'll go in the last one um, but if you have anything that you want me to add into what would you change about Uber's working together priorities, again, this is more like these priorities right here uh, that I just went over. Um, this is what they are focusing in on. Um, yeah. And then, um, I mean, if, if anybody has anything more that they want to put in here, just put... Uh, put number one and then put what your claim is. And then um, I'm gonna go on to number two. So if anybody wants to add, what would you add to Uber's working together priorities? Um, I think part of that was in here. Have drivers part of the solution. Working together will make the best changes for all, 100%. Um, Transparency throughout Uber's operation. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the ability to have collective bargaining or protection. And I don't mean unions. Some people might like unions, some people don't. I'm not really a fan. That's my personal decision. If that pisses other people off, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I respect your decisions and what your thoughts are. Um, please respect mine on that. Um, so when I mean collective bargaining, I mean drivers coming together um, and definitely protections. Whoops. That should be and. Um, better wages. For mile and time wages.
Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to change it. The many changes has made California. Help if I spelled right. <laughs> uh, should be nationwide, like the. I know some of these things are um, probably more should be in the third, but that's why I'm going to copy and paste some things. So um, the money change Uber has made in California should be nationwide, like the ability to um, see, set prices, set the price or set the fare. What is that called, actually? The ability to set the fare. Aries, what do you say? What'd you say? No matter how hard I try to get Uber uh, to raise my writing, they all said no. Yeah, unfortunately, that is um, that's hard to do because they have it's built in. It's not like Lyft. Lyft's uh, is much different when it comes down to it. That's why a lot of drivers are five star with Lyft, and you know less than that. Um, I mean, honest. I'm gonna make a video actually really soon. Um, once my car is all fixed, uh, then I'm going to make a video on what you can do to help get a higher star rating by giving a good ride. Um, it's really going to come down to a passenger and how they're going to rate you. You're going to get one stars. You're going to get two, three, four stars, even though the ride might have gone perfectly fine. In your opinion, people rate low, people rate stupid, uh, but you can definitely do certain things to kind of stand out. Uh, and it's not a huge investment in any way, like trying to provide water or other amenities like that. Because I don't suggest doing that at all. Um, that used to be something that was popular back in the day, but you were also getting paid a lot more money. Uh, so that was a whole different thing. But now because they don't pay as well, I don't suggest that. Plus the entitlement attitude is way too high. But the biggest thing is there are certain things that you can do that can have a lasting impact on your rides. Uh, and I'm going to make that video very soon. Uh, like I said, once my car is fixed, that's when I'm going to uh, make that video uh, because it's going to be what you do with your vehicle. That's gonna be some, oh, Lisa, okay. Yeah, Chelsea's not here, she, she's upstairs. <laughs> I mean, she is here, but I'll, I'll yeah. I mean, text me and um, when I plug my phone in, starts charging up then. Um, don't drive at night if you care about your rating. Uber in Tampa, that is not true. That isn't necessary. I mean, you're probably going to have some more issues, but that's not true. I mean, I have a five-star Lyft rating, and I have a 4.94 and 4.95 on Uber. Um, so I still consider those high compared to what they say the averages are, because I think it's, in my market, I want to say it's four point eight for Lyft. Actually, I don't even remember what Lyft is. And it's probably changed since last time I looked and I don't even know what the, the other thing is. Uh, no crybaby lifestyle. So sick of the whining. <laughs> <Wah! laughs> um, what's going on? Uh, people don't look or people look for any reason to sue, probably sue you for giving them arrowhead of Dasani. <laughs> That, yeah, that that could be true, yeah. Wage increase probably isn't going to happen. Um, but, you know, one of the big things is if they operated better, then they could probably do that. Um, the other thing is they're going to have to raise rates. I mean, they're in a price lock, uh, in a price war. Some people are saying that they're fixing prices. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. I guess that'll be up to a court to decide if that's the case or not. Um, but they're going to have to raise rates. And if they raise rates, that'll open a lot of different things. But that also is, what about having the option to allow drivers to have the same changes in California? So that's where you can set your own fare up to 5X. So I would put mine at 2X. So that same $5 ride will now become a $10 ride. Um, I mean, you can change that if you want. That's up to you and where you want to put it. Uh, but I think something like that should just be around, around the entire um, 
aspect of the country instead of just California because it's already working there. Um, the many changes that were made in California should be nationwide, like the ability to set the fare, see the drop off. Um, what else did they do? It is something else in California. That's nice. Can't remember. I mean, setting the fare is obviously the best because uh, that's really what matters. Um, that's easy enough um anything else with the the uh what you want to see Whew. you know as much as all these drivers bitch and complain about these companies and how many times these companies take your suggestion and throw them in garbage uh why do y'all continue to drive for them because it's easy money <laughs> i mean really that that's probably most of it uh you know Oh, crybaby, I, I agree with you. Like a lot of people are bitching and complaining. And if you were driving for quite a while over the last few years, um, you know, ever since they changed the 80 20 split uh, and got rid of uh, or and started upfront pricing, that's when you started seeing all these changes. Prior to that, it was a really good spot. Like you were making good money. And for the drivers who have been doing this for that time frame, uh, they're the ones who are probably. The ones who are saying, well, these are some issues because I was making double what I was making earlier and now it's a lot less. Uh, so there, there's that there when it comes down to it. Destination where they're going in California. Uh, yeah, so in Cali, they made a lot of different changes for AB5 to try to curtail that so they wouldn't be employees. Uh, even though today they had a injunction that went in California's favor, favor instead of Uber and Lyft's. Uh, so Uber and Lyft will definitely be appealing that. Um, but yeah, that was another thing that happened today as well. Um, so you keep it at 2x, but still getting a lot of surge pricing over 2x. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> um, yeah, that's even better. Uh they raise rates, they lose money. Think of the lower class, people who couldn't use it. Um, Uber and Tampa, that, that's partially true. I mean, you're, you're definitely going to have a lot of people who are uh, going to look at the pricing. But I think if you're going to have drivers of one company who are getting these types of benefits over the other company, you're going to have those drivers. They're going to be happier more than likely when it comes to what they're doing. Now, dealing with other passengers, dealing with other crap that's been going on, that can also have a major impact on what's going on. And also rider burnout. Um, you know, when you experience burnout, being burnt out from doing Uber and Lyft, um, I had that, you know, very recently in like December, January timeframe, I took a little bit of time off because I needed to. Um, and then, you know, I started getting back into it and then, you know, for a little while, a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden I had to stop working because of, you know, this whole pandemic. Well, you know, a lot of crazy things was going on. So, um, yeah, anything else that we would do to add to Uber's working together priorities? Um, I think pretty much that is uh, good for right now. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. More driver safety. like. In inventory on all rides and buying rider accounts. A uh, yeah, that's fine right there. All right, over 12,000 rides, never really got burned out. It was hella fun. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, some people, I mean, I, yeah, I got burned out. You know, I, I, well, I'm not doing this full time. I do it, you know, I work part time uh, doing this. And, you know, honestly, you know, with editing, uploading, creating content for here, uh, also, you know, running a business as well on top of that, trying to balance family life and all that. It just added up over time. So, 
you know, it was uh, one of those things where it's like just getting burned out. So if you've never experienced that, that's awesome. That's good. Um, I've seen a few people who have experienced burnout and they really need to take the time off. Um, but if you haven't, that's great. Hated doing food more than people. I'm right there with you. I don't like doing food. I mean, it's nice to do that every once in a while, but it didn't pay as well in this area. It was not good. So I agree with you there. If you haven't done dude food delivery, doesn't seem worth it. Matt, you could try it. It might be worth it in your area. You got to try it though. What's up, Bobby? Bobby Trizzle in the house. What's going on? <laughs> um, all right, so let's go on. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? So driver safety. Very important. Riders, so they kicked off that form. Verify third party riders. Force rules already in the press. Like on the miners. Miners. Um right your companies should work with the states and city governments give drivers big rebate on electric cars since the laws are changing uh try to try to walk and type at the same time <laughs> no that makes sense i i agree you know i want to get a wayne o'connor what's going on um yeah i will I, honestly i want to go electric for the next car i've said that previously and i want to i i'm looking at tesla i'm not looking probably i don't want to get an electric car right now um but that would be great to have something where they give out some sort of kickback when it comes to purchasing a vehicle especially if you're going to be using it for uber and lyft that'd be really nice to have some sort of kickback um something going on there on top of any government rebate that might be coming from that if that's the case but no i definitely agree with that that would be a good thing um i don't know if that would be put on here though uh because uh that's that's a kind of specific thing um late night driver here hell yeah the <laughs> same here uh what what else were they where did i say uh oh yeah review or um um reevaluate the rating system and create an overhaul overhaul it um yeah the rating system is good uh have the ability to oh wait no Yeah, what else did you get were you guys saying to add in this um um better train currency on the rules when it comes to better transparency on the rules 
to riders when it comes to multi stop rides. Um, I'm going to put better transparency and clarification on the rules to riders when it comes to multi stop rides. Uh, when it comes to um, accompanied, oh my god, I love autocorrect or er, spell check. <laughs> Um, other safety concerns um, when a report against a driver is filed. Proof, proof, if able to have, or well, let's put require proof, require proof, if able to, um, because some, some of them aren't going to be, um, but requiring proof. So if like you complain that the car is dirty, you need to have a picture. If not, it kind of goes null and void. Like a, they should just say, "Hey, uh, a, a rider reached out to us, said your car was dirty. Uh, we're not taking any action in terms of, you know, your rating was, or we're, we're going to take away that that star rating if you show us that the car is clean. Snap a picture of the car and upload it. Something like that. That would be good. Um, so if, if a report." And then it shouldn't stay on the record. Or if it does, it should go like green where it's like, all right, that's not really going to have any any effect against you. Uh, if there's multiple reports or anything like that and they're all green, that shouldn't, ha that shouldn't have any effect on you as a driver. So they shouldn't come back and say a little while later, oh, due to safety concerns or due to many reports, you have been deactivated and sorry, you can't do anything about it. Um, so something like that, they should be able to update. I uh, want to pro uh, require proof if able to. Um, and get both sides of the story. Take dash cam footage in the event of a report against a driver or if a driver is to report a rider. Um, need more cancellation options. Need Options. Uh, is this a lawsuit I stumbled on? Um, which not which lawsuit? Some passengers are so pity uh, they spill chips in your car and take a picture. That's true. Yeah. Um, there are some issues like that. That's one of the reasons why dash cams are really good because they're going to show you exactly what happens and what's going on. Um, something that's going to be, you know, interior, that's got a good wide angle, you know, the Van and 4 that I just got, um, that has a really wide angle. So you're getting not only more picture from side to side, so you're able to see outside the car in the front windows as well, but you're also to see more picture, which means you can see a lot of things that are going on. Um, so that's definitely something that's good to have. Uh, but anything that's going to be interior facing and has IR is going to be good. And again, another reason why dash cameras are so important and why dash camera footage needs to be accepted on every single thing when there's a report, if a driver wants to provide that type of information. Um, oh yeah. Um, if 
You hate the van the N4? How come? Yeah, why do you hate the N4? Uh, fair, uh, you're having... Oh, okay. What's going on with it? Um, let me know what that is. I, I want to know. Um, there was an issue with the N4 for a little bit. They did come out with a firmware update, and I guess that solved a lot of issues. So you might have to just update the firmware. Uh, that could solve all your issues. But yeah, let me know what it is. Um, and then also, if you if it's like some issue with the memory card or something make sure you have the correct type of memory card that can read and write quickly you need a class u3 um well yeah let me know what the, that is um let's see what else we got um write your company should work Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So, submit. All right. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, oh, you can submit another response. Okay, so you can actually make multiple responses, too. <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, if you want to do that, then you absolutely can. But yeah, that is the op-ed. That is some of the things that Uber is actually doing when it comes down to what they're trying to do, um, or at least try to take some action on. Uh, whether it's actually going to be good or not, it's going to be up if the drivers are actually going to be able to participate in that conversation and have real changes. Because like I said, if you can bring both parties to the table, work together, problem solve, then I think you're going to be able to have the ability to create a better working conditions for drivers and a better opportunity for Uber where everybody's going to be happy and make more money. Um, so use the older van true. Yeah, I had the end too. Um, the first one I got would only record three seconds and then stop. They send the second one uh, and it works unless you try plugging the rear camera. Um, plug in the rear camera. stop recording huh yeah matt try going on Avantru's website downloading the firmware update and seeing if that's the issue um yeah that's that's crazy hopefully that hopefully that's just the issue where it's the firmware that needed to be updated um because yeah sometimes things like that can happen where something happens um and hopefully it's fixed uh but yeah try doing that you go just go to right to Avantru's website go under uh i think it's driver uh downloads or driver updates or something like that, or firmware updates. Um, and it's pretty explanatory on how you can get it. You just select Vantru on 4. Somewhere on there, it should be the firmware update. Um, <clears throat> gotta get some water. It's been... <laughs> mm. All right, but yeah. Um, again, anything else that you may have, uh, make sure to voice that in your survey. Fill out that survey and put it forward uh so you can put in whatever you want fill it out however you want uh, don't worry about submitting anything that is going to be tied back to you unless you want to uh it's not really going to matter i don't think um but i wouldn't put them past them if you brought up certain things and they're like uh yeah we're gonna be watching you or something like that uh <clears throat> sorry but yeah check out those different things see what's going on um Check out the descriptions in the link below because that's going to take you to the op-ed, which is going to have a lot of the different links that they link to in that article. And then also uh, both the things that Uber has put out when it comes to what kind of changes they want to make or thinking about making. And then also giving the reason, saying that they're ready to make the changes, but they're not until there's some sort of action taking place. Um, which I think is just cop out right now. That's my opinion. Uh, yours could be different, but uh, whatever you guys think, again, just make sure you fill out that survey. So hopefully if they do look at it and they do fill it out or something like that and help make changes, it could be a way to understand what drivers are really looking at, uh, what drivers really want, because that information could then be in turn brought to legislators and 
key lawmakers when it comes down to it. Uh, so it could have some sort of impact, maybe even uh, very small, but it could have some. And I'd rather have that than not. You have eight cameras in your car. <laughs> nice. Uh, the main unit works great now. It's just the rear camera that's the issue at this point. Just uh, out, just out the firmware. Okay. <laughs> yeah, eight. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, pretty much gonna be ending up now. I knew it was gonna be a longer live stream going over all this because it was a longer op-ed and all that, and then some of the stuff that I was looking into. But I wanted to share all this information because this is stuff that can actually have a major impact on all drivers because if they put laws into a place or if they try to get prop 22 without having driver representation um, those all are going to be in their benefit favors and not necessarily the driver's benefit i'd like to sit down figure out things that will be good for drivers as a whole and that can still be beneficial for Uber as a whole or Lyft or any of the other companies out there. So I want it to be a win-win for both. And the only way to do that is to have drivers who are actually out there driving, who know what they're talking about, who know what it looks like when it comes to the market, how they can create and work together to make certain changes. Um, can have, never have too much camera footage. I agree with you there. If I could have, uh, honestly, a perfect setup, in my opinion, would be forward-facing, interior-facing, rear-facing, as the Van True on 4 is, but then also something like out the sides of the car would be really good because, you know, if something happens where if a, dry, a rider kicks your car, if somebody, you know, hits you from the side, uh, something like that, that's all going to be on the camera where it's right there. You can't dispute that. And then also a camera in the rear uh, part of the car. So in the back of the car. And if you're in like a minivan or something where you have three rows or an SUV that has three rows, have it in that back third row too. That would be the ultimate setup because no matter what, at that point, everything is covered 360 degrees around the car, 360 degrees inside the car. And there's nothing that can be disputed if you are a driver who is acting as professionally as they can be and something else happens. Um, get a 360 camera while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, have a camera in your trunk. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, something like that. I mean, that that's just, I, I wouldn't do that. Now, the, the funny thing is I've actually seen a van that had that. They had the two cameras facing... Uh, they were in the rear of the van. They were facing out like this. Uh, you could see them set up like that to get the outside of it. They had a rear-facing camera. They had a forward-facing. They had an interior-facing. I don't know if they had more cameras inside, but um, if you say you have eight cameras, I actually will believe you, whether you're pulling my chain or not. Um, I don't. I, I still will believe it because I've seen somebody else who had that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, for people who steal your snuff? Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, people are doing that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be wrapping this up now. Um, again, if you have any other questions or anything like that, you can always comment um, below in the comment section. Um, if there's a last comment in the live chat, you can do that, and we can try um, talking about that. Uh, <laughs> it was only a couple hours about normal. Lisa, this actually stayed on topic. That's a different. Usually the first 15, 20 minutes or so is about whatever it is. And then it goes into, you know, whatever we want to talk about. So this time it actually stayed on topic. I knew it was going to be a long on topic live stream, but that's the whole thing. Aim to be over the top with everything you do. Nice. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah. So like I said, check those things out. It's going to be beneficial for you. If you're in California, make sure to read the entirety of Prop 22. At you know, If you read a page a day for the next 20 days, I think it's 24 pages or something like that. I don't remember because um, it was a little while since I looked at it. Um, you know, you'll be done in a couple of weeks. But at least read it or read it section by section or something so you know what you're voting for. And you can also share that information with other drivers in your area. 
um, because Prop 22 may not be exactly what you want when it comes down to it. Now, employment may not be what you want, but that's the whole thing. It's going to be up to you to decide what you want to do. I'm not going to influence you in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to. All I want you to do is just read the information and make an informed decision when it comes to November. Plus, I live in New York. I don't live in California. Uh, so that's a big difference there, too. Uh, I, if you ask me what I would do, I could tell you that. But um, again, I don't want to influence your decision when you do go to make that decision in November. Um, plan to upgrade the engine camera, seatbelt camera. <laughs> nice that's funny um and then yeah lastly again anybody can get me in touch with dara i would love to have him on here and again i want to have constructive conversations i don't want to lash out or do anything or call him out there will be certain things i will call out that i want questions uh that i will have questions on that i want real answers to i don't want it vetted by legal uh, I want to have a real conversation and then where there's problems, let's sit down and try to work together to make it better for everybody. And also the live stream where all people who are watching can participate, ask questions and uh, say what they need to say to see how, again, we can all make it a little bit better for everybody. And, uh, uh, hopefully he takes me up on that offer at some point. I mean, he did do Harry's uh, channel today. Uh, they did that uh, a little bit earlier and then premiered it, er, uh, I think it was 8.30. And if you haven't checked that out, go over there and check it out. It's about 30 minutes long, uh, so you can see that as well. Um, other than that, yeah, that's all I'm going to say for tonight. So uh, you guys have a wonderful and great night. Um, tomorrow we're going to be calling scra scammers again. Uh, so look for that for the live stream. Uh, that is always fun. We're going to try to do it a little bit earlier tomorrow so we can try to get some different types of scams that are going to still be open. I love doing that. That's fun. Um, one of the other things too is a link right here, uh, is the YouTube channel scammer jammer. Uh, so go check that out. Just started uploading the content there. So the live streams are going to be on this channel because we want you to uh, participate in giving us ideas to screw with scammers and all that fun stuff. Uh, so we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, and then the outtake or not outtakes, but the edited form of that call will be on Scammer Jammer. Once that channel gets more traction, more people, um, then I'm going to go and do the live stream directly on that. And this will stay more rideshare. But again, it's really fun. We have a lot of a lot of laughs on it. Uh, we have a lot of crazy videos that are going to be coming out over the last few live streams. There was a live stream that was just done uh, last uh, week and a half ago or something. Um, check that out because you'll see exactly what it looks like if you want to look at it a little sooner. We had some really great calls that night. And again, looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, there's going to be more videos and stuff. Uh, I got to try to catch up on some of the things that happened from last week because of being on vacation. Hopefully I'll be able to get that, uh, soon. This type of, or of news just came out and it's a much more pressing matter, at least in my opinion. Um, so we'll get, get that stuff hopefully at some point. Uh, but other than that, everybody have a great night. And as always, never drink and drive, always tip your drivers, deliver drivers and shoppers, and we'll see you next time.